Hey guys, we are starting off day seven out in the garden. I know I ended the last video saying we hadn't focused anything on herbs and dehydrating and we're going to make up for that. Last night I emptied out my drying rack and put it into the dehydrator so those items are all ready to be stored, which means I've got a bunch of empty stuff. Now saying that we do have to finish the garlic, but first we're out in the garden and we're going to collect up some herbs. Let's take a look around. The garden is a complete jungle. This is our big in-ground garden, not our raised beds and it is growing like crazy this year we just haven't had time to really get in here and do a whole lot of work but where we're going to be focusing on is over there in that crazy jungle of a food thicket so today i'm going to focus on harvesting some of that bergamot or bee balm that you see over there with the little pink petals there's a little bit more over off in the distance and <laughs> chocolate mint it is just going wild this is one of our three patches out here in the garden and it is just thick this year absolutely thick there's another patch you can see it's kind of crept all across the pathway yes there is supposed to be a pathway here i have been lacking in my weed whacking skills but what we're going for is further down this row the lemon balm so you can see here we've got a patch of lemon balm already going to flower I need to cut some of that down and our second patch is just right over here on the other side right next to some more of that bee balm so we're going to harvest a good amount of this here today because i have not harvested any of this so far this year so that's where we're going to start and you can see here again another patch of mint that has just taken over the pathway so we're going to butcher this back this is our chocolate mint we love this one for teas things like that in the winter time. Smoothies in the summertime. We use a lot of mint around here. Hence why we grow a lot of mint. It's a hummingbird over there. I love seeing that in the garden. She was just on the broccoli flowers, pollinating away. Lovely. A lot of people don't think about it, but birds pollinate almost as much as insects. Well, I'm by no means done. There is so much more to collect. But my arms are getting full and I didn't bring a bucket. So we're going to start with this lemon balm, chocolate mint, and bee balm. All right, so we are back inside and now comes the fun job of picking all the leaves off these branches. Now, yes, I could throw them in with the branches intact and just wait for them to dry. But I do find that they dry quicker when I take them off the branches. I just, that's the way I do it. It's a little bit extra work, but it saves some time. And when you're dehydrating a lot of things and you want to work in a fast pace, I think that's the way to do it. So we're going to get all of these organized into the rack behind me. As you see here, we got it all emptied out yesterday. All that has gone into the dehydrator and is now ready to be jarred up. So we will do that in a moment. And hopefully we'll get this into the dehydrator uh, by the end of these three days. It usually takes 24 to 48 hours in the rack before I feel it's dry enough to kind of be slightly crispy and then I just finish it off in the electric dehydrator. So, not gonna bore you with the details, we're gonna get all of this off here, get it in the rack, and then we're gonna move on to that garlic that still needs to be uh, food processed up and put into the dehydrator as well. So, big dehydrating day here. All right guys, so better late than never. We're on day eight of the Every Bit Counts Challenge and we're finally gonna process this garlic. What we wanna do here is make garlic powder or at least dehydrate it to the point that it's ready to make garlic powder. And I waited out just out of pure curiosity how much garlic I was processing here. This is five pounds. I actually added a few extra cloves to get it right to the five pound mark. So that's a lot of garlic. I'm curious as to whether it's going to fit in my dehydrator or not. I don't wanna layer it too thick, but I've got a spot set up out on the porch so that we can dehydrate this outside because believe me, if you're going to be dehydrating garlic, the smell is wild. So make sure you've got it somewhere out of your house unless you want everything to smell like garlic for weeks. 
We've already done this once this year and I'll quickly show you here in a moment what we ended up with from our first round of dehydrating the garlic. So this is what we have from our first round of garlic. We didn't do quite as much as this, so I have a feeling we'll get two full jars from it, but we leave it in this like urit. It's a flaked form. Uh, basically we find it stores better than that. You know when you grind it into the powder and then you keep it in a jar for a while, every time you open it and close it, a little moisture gets in there and eventually it's a clump. Yes, you could put one of those little silicone packet things in there, but I don't have those and I don't really want to put them into my food. So this is how we leave it and we just grind as we need. And this is what I mean. I just keep a little pouch like this and when I run out of what's in there, I will just put half a cup into my little coffee grinder, grind it all up and we put it back in here. So the most that's ever getting ruined if it gets wet is just a little tiny bit. So that's how we're gonna do it. We got the food processor ready to go. So we're gonna get this all ground up into the dehydrator and then it's probably going to take about three days to fully dehydrate enough to be put away. I know I say this all the time, but I wish you could smell this. Oh, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's garlicky. I mean, we love garlic here, but this just smells so good. I have to admit, I had never had fresh garlic powder until this year. I'd always had store-bought, and boy, there is such a difference in flavor and smell, and just, mm, it is so much stronger and tastier than anything you'd buy in the grocery store. If you get a chance to grow garlic and make garlic powder, go for it, because it is worth it. All right, so I have one tray done up here. I have a feeling I am not going to get all of this onto my four trays that I have. It's a little bit thicker than I would like it to have been on just that one, and I did not take a quarter of what's in that bowl. But one thing I wanted to touch on quickly, if you're doing the dehydrating of your garlic, you're going to need this uh, fruit leather sheets for in your dehydrator. Uh, Many people have square or rectangular dehydrators or whatever, but uh, you definitely need those because it does fall through the little grooves. Uh, I've not tried it on the one that is for herbs that has the little holes, but uh, I like to do it on the uh, fruit leather sheets and it seems to work very, very well. So we're gonna keep going and I'll bring you back at the end to see how much I didn't get into my dehydrator. I have to pause you for a moment because I have to go get my laundry because it started to rain and I have three loads of laundry on the line. So I'll be back. I'm back. I only managed to get a little bit wet Unfortunately, the clothes are all damp again, so I guess we're gonna have to set up the indoor clothes drying rack. Back to garlic. Well, I was right, I didn't get it all in. I still have a pound and a third left, so we didn't even get four pounds. So basically for future reference for myself, probably three quarters of a pound per sheet is max. I've got it piled pretty thick on here. It's gonna take a lot longer to dehydrate, but I was trying to get it used up because we still have another half box left, but we're going to get this out into the porch, get it going on, on dehydrate. I've got it at 115. It's probably going to take about three days, so you probably won't see the results of this till our next video. But I am glad to have it done because this was last year's garlic and we need to get this year's garlic picked. So it was a case of we were having a backlog and needed to do something. I have to admit, I think next year I'm going to plant a little bit less garlic because I'm going to have enough garlic powder to last me years at the rate we're going here. So let's get this done. And then tomorrow we're going to get on to making some August stew. So as we wrap up this eighth day of the Every Bit Counts Challenge, I want to empty the dehydrator. Now this is stuff that got put into the dehydrator last video and what we're going to be moving is that stuff that we put into the drying rack on yesterday it's surprising it's been actually pretty good and some of it's drying really quite quickly and tomorrow is supposed to be pouring rain so I really want to go out and get some stuff harvested to put into that drying rack again today or tonight might not include it in the video because it's going to be quick because it's already starting to rain but we will see it when it does come out of the uh, dehydrator and get added to our jars so let's empty this now and see where our jars sit for the end of this so first one that we've got on the top here is our bee balm or bergamot. We're going to try not to disrupt that chocolate mint underneath and basically just kind of get it in there. It's a lot easier to put it into a big bowl and then put it through the funnel into the jars. Basically what I do at this point is just a little scrunch. It really does very little to the petals, but it breaks up those leaves so that it can all be mixed together for tea. I like it that way. Oh, mm. 
Oh gosh, it smells so good. And then, and here we go. We drink a lot of teas in the middle of winter, so that is why we put a lot away. A lot of this can also be added to our smoothies in the summertime. So as I'm in the process here of emptying out our chocolate mint, one thing I should say is that these would be great for uh, cold teas in the summer as well. It's just something that I have not managed to make the time to really focus on, but we really should because we do collect up a lot of things that would make a wonderful cold tea as well. And there's where we're sitting so far this season in our dried herbs. Definitely a long ways to go, although we're on to our second jar of regular mint. The one that is the most disappointing is the stevia, but it's only just coming into full plants now. But we're already using from that because we ran short for 2023. So I'm hoping to have at least four or five jars of stevia for the 2024 season. It is early. I've got my bowl out because we've managed to beat the rain to do chores. So we're going to pick some of those herbs before they get completely drenched and get them into that hanging dryer. Mint is definitely something, you can hear all the roosters, mint is definitely something that grows very, very readily here on the homestead. We have patches of mint just like this everywhere. All the same mint, it just kind of gets spread around. So we're going to pick a whole lot of that because it is a great one to have. What do you think, Sophie? Hey. Yeah, Sophie is our old girl. She has been here for, well, she's been with us for six and a half years now. Still lays the occasional egg, but she is quite the pet. And look at this basil, still going strong. Like I mentioned in previous videos, keep picking it and it'll come back bigger and better than ever. It's been a wonderful wet year for it too, so I think that's helping. Well, we managed to bear the mosquitoes and look at that, a full bucket here of mint and basil to go in the dryer. Not too bad. I think we're doing the best we've ever done on dehydrating stuff this year. All right, guys, today is our bigger canning day in the three day series here. And we are going to be making August stew. Now I know many of you have seen this before, but this is such a tried and true recipe for us. We go through at least 52 jars of this a year. Some of what we have for this stew is store-bought, the carrots, the celery, and even the onions, because none of our stuff for that is ready yet. But what is ready is our beans. So we're going for it because I don't have a lot of freezer space. This recipe requires 12 cups of beans, pole beans, wax beans, whatever kind of beans. I'm even mixing in some lima beans from the freezer, as well as peas, which I had froze earlier this year from the garden, and squash, which we just gotten out of the garden. So much stuff from the garden. This August stew is wonderful because it's very flexible. You can change your recipe however you kind of see fit, depending on what you have available. I love that it uses a whole bunch of fresh herbs to give it its flavoring. It's wonderful, a little bit of salt and pepper and tomato juice, and that's it. If you had fresh tomatoes, you could use those, but I don't have any fresh tomatoes ready yet. So we're using some old juice up, which is great to get that out of the pantry as well. I am looking forward to this. I love stocking this one in the pantry. It is a great one for mixing in pasta sauces or to bulk out a different stew. We just pour it in to add a little bit extra curries it works really great in the winter time when you need a fast meal and you don't want to be chopping and frying extra veggies you just bung in one of the august stews and it works so perfect i can't say enough good about this stew for being super versatile for almost every application you can even eat it on its own with a little bit of mozzarella cheese baked on top it's pretty good that way too and lucky for me today i have helpers i love summer holidays and help when it comes to my canning and chopping vegetables, because that's like the worst part of canning. And onions, James is doing the onions. All right, so while the kids are hard at work chopping and prepping everything, I decided I'm gonna take the easy route to get things in the pot and use the food processor to chop it all up. That's, that's not fair. fair. They're so ridiculous. Yeah. And really, before I get going on uh, this recipe, I should also note that James was a huge help this morning with all those herbs that I picked outside. He managed to pick them all off of the stems and get them into my drying rack, so it's really appreciated. And, you know, it really does save time and allow me to move on to other things, which is awesome. All right, Alex wants to take a snack break to show you her uh, pet. Her name is Cheese. She's bearded dragon. She is six years old. Good girl. 
Oh, you dropped some. Ah, she almost bit me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got everything all cut up and portioned, ready to go for this recipe. It just needs to start getting bunged in the pot. But the last thing to do is cut up our herbs. Now, I have a little trick that I like to use. Uh, I've tried in the food processor. I find I waste a lot of it. I use my pizza cutter and I just get it on the cutting board and go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It works amazing for cutting up your herbs. I know you can get little slap gizmos and gadgets and everything else, but honestly, this simple way is much better for me. I have so many things that I've put into the cupboard and picked up and people have given me that I've never used because I just go with the simple old fashioned way, I guess. I'm not sure if pizza cutter is really an old fashioned way, but needless to say, we're gonna get our cup of parsley and our cup of basil all chopped up and then we're gonna start putting everything in the pots. All right, so there we go. Two cups of herbs all chopped up, pressed in there quite packed because I like it to be a very flavorful stew. So that's ready to go and now it's time to start cooking in the big pot. We're going to put in a drizzle of olive oil, our six large onions, and we're gonna get those cooked off till they're kind of that translucent color, maybe a little bit browned, but not too well done because this is a pressure canning recipe. We're basically just trying to get everything heated up and into the jars it's gonna go. So after we've got our six onions in there and cooked them off a little bit, we're gonna put in our 12 cloves of ground up garlic and then we'll bring it back. All right, so once you got your onion and garlic in there, the rest of the ingredients can basically go in in any particular order. Uh, I like to do my uh, carrots and celery next because I find they take the longest to kind of cook off, but really you're bunging it all in quick. So we've got 12 stalks of celery, 12 carrots chopped up, 12 cups of beans, and about eight cups of summer squash. You can see those lima beans in there all mixed in. This is going to be quite the batch of stew. I actually have no idea how many jars it's gonna make. You'll just have to stay to the end to find out. Six cups of our frozen peas. So all that's going into the pot. We're gonna get it stirred around and then we'll be talking about our tomato juice that we're gonna add. All right, so you can hear it simmering away in there and we don't have any liquid in there yet. So we gotta get moving on that. Now you could use fresh tomatoes if you had them. You need to add enough to get enough liquid. I don't have fresh tomatoes yet. My tomatoes are so far behind in the garden. So we're using tomato juice from previous years. And it's actually perfect because these are my last three quart jars from 2021's red tomato juice. So I'm gonna put all three in. I may need four, we'll see how it goes. But I know from making this recipe before, I definitely need the three. So we will get these in, get it stirred around. Then we're just going to add our two tablespoons of salt. Whoa. Nothing broke, all good. So then we're just going to add our two tablespoons of salt, one tablespoon of black pepper. And those herbs are the last part you put in, but you don't put them in until the end. We wanna get this to a boil, put in the herbs and lemon juice, and then jar it right away. So let's just sit and wait. We are bubbling away as you can hear. It is time to add our last couple of ingredients. Here we've got our 3 8 cup of lemon juice and that two cups of herbs. Look at that, oh it smells so good. And that three liters, as I thought, was plenty of liquid in there. So we're not gonna add our fourth liter at all. I always bring it up, I never use it. It's always three liters. I know this, but I still keep bringing it up anyways. So. Now it's time to get it in the jars. And the one thing I love about pressure canning is I don't need to sterilize those jars. So I've got my lids in hot water ready to go and uh, jars already here. I've got 18 jars because I'm gonna be stacking in my pressure canner. Don't know if I mentioned that already that this is a pressure canner recipe. You can't do this in a water bath canner. I know someone will tell me you can, but it's a really excessive long time to process it. So let's get it into jars. Now remember, finger tight, very important. I don't touch it, I just swirl and that's it. All right, so we ended up getting our 18 jars in the pressure canner. So we're just about ready to get that packed up. But I wanted to show you what was left over. So I probably could have maybe got another jar, jar and a half, but I only get 18 at a time. 
in my canner and to be honest we maybe had a little bit of extra beans and I know there was a little bit of extra squash in there so that just kind of added it up but it's perfect because now we're going to add that to our lemony basil soup for lunch and if you're interested in the lemony basil soup recipe I will link it above because that's one that we've done before it's a nice vegetable soup you can add meat or anything to it we will be making it once the tomatoes are ready but I'm not using my juice for that one so we're going to make some lunch Get the pressure canner going and uh, we'll meet you back here when they're out of there and ready to go so you can see. Well guys, we are at the end of day nine. I'll be honest, I can't even remember what I did on day seven. So hopefully my recap here is going to be for the right stuff. But we did get those herbs all dried and look at this, a full jar of chocolate mint already. And there's so much more out in the garden as you saw in that clip lemon balm that half filled what I harvested there so realistically one more harvest and that's probably going to be lots for us for this year because we don't use it that much it's just a winter tea type thing so if I can get a full jar I will be happy with that the bee balm I've got some more to go in here yet that I have to dry through the other dehydrator but as you can probably hear in the background dehydrators are running over time because we've got the garlic in there and we've got that second round of herbs that we harvested with the basil and the other mint. So those are still running in the dehydrator, but we will get them out for the next video. But all in all, I'm pretty happy. Again, I still need some more stinging nettle. Parsley. Parsley is really, really weak. We definitely have to harvest a bunch more parsley. And my parsley looks amazing right now because we've had so much rain. So I definitely have to get that going this week coming up here or these next couple days. But all in all, 18 jars of the August stew, and we're about to go into another round of making that. I would really like to do three batches. That would put me over a jar a week, which I feel comfortable with having in the uh, winter pantry. So stay tuned as we come into day 10, 11, 12, and uh, who knows what we're going to get up to. I'm sure there'll be some dehydrating in there. We have to deal with that garlic, which I'll show you how that's going to go. And yeah. The world is my oyster, so stay tuned.